Hello, I'm Phil Zio, and I'm here to teach how to use Kako S Reaper Digital Audio Workstation. The version I have here is 4.3, but now they have up to 4.32, I believe, and it's 64-bit, running on a 6-core AMD Black Phenom processor with 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 1 terabyte hard drive, a 1 terabyte external hard drive, and just to throw in some extra good measures, I've got a Line 6 interface from UX2 to prevent any latency whatsoever. However, with the video, of course, there's going to be latency. So for the most part, I'm going to do what I can to edit it. Now, what you're going to want to do is open the main interface. The cool thing about the interface is that it's infinitely scalable. So if you hold control and scroll up, for example, you get so many more options than what you had before. This is the left hand bar. You can insert a new track by pressing Control T, right clicking and pressing Insert New Track, or quite simply, double clicking. Now, what I have is right now open five different tracks. So, Control, Scroll, and there you go, resized. Now, before you do that, if you have anything open from before, you're going to want to go open a new project, as I'm sure you're aware. Don't save this project unless it was something really important that you didn't have saved for any reason. And create a new track. Now, if you're new to this, you're going to want to go to Options, check out the Preferences, and Themes. I've got a ton of themes. And see, under the General Options menu, you're going to get prompted on Languages. I'm going to assume you want English. UI tweaks, those are really advanced. Path settings, default paths for recordings, default paths for renders. You may want that if you're trying to save to a different drive at all times to cut down on uh, space used. Projects, all this is default stuff. Defaults, defaults. And here's where we're getting into the good part, the audio settings. This is really important because these determine when a track is muted, if something goes horribly wrong, you've got a high-pitched screeching noise that exceeds 18 decibels, it'll automatically mute by default. Also, the devices menu. It's a sub-menu underneath the audio menu. You're going to want to see what drivers you're using. Wave out, Wasapi, WDM kernel streaming, etc. Now, wave out and direct sound are usually the default inputs for any Windows system. I'm using Windows 7 and I use the wave out as a precaution when I have to share it with people in the studio. So they have to hear through my speakers. I use ASIO as a low latency audio kernel to prevent any latency or glitching because it's a much more stable system. Now I have it set as a specialized kernel that came with the Line 6 UX2 that also came with Podform, which is an amazing piece of software that I'm going to be demonstrating today as well. You're going to get to see it, but I'm not really going to be teaching anybody how to use it. Now, what's cool about it is you get to choose each individual device send. Now, a send is really cool. As you can see, these are the volume meters for my vocals right now. I have it run through a comped vocal setting, and I have the input set to microphone one. There are numerous different ports on this UX2. It comes default with an instrument port, two of them, one for padding, and two microphone ports that can be used in conjunction for stereo. I use that for drums. A line one, a line two, and a line stereo. So you can use pro possibly two different guitar chords in conjunction or any number of inputs. So what you're going to notice is there's these things called sends. A send is where you go. It's essentially an output from one place to another. So sends 1 and 2 are tone A. They're where you're getting the comp vocals. Sends 3 and 4 are getting the dry input. I just pressed 18 dB, so now you can see it just got excessively loud. You can't hear it because I have it set to just dry direct from the system. However, it's cool to see that these buttons can actually make a difference. Now, what we're going to do is, with the dry sends, I'm going to press record and enable this to be by, set by the UX2 driver. And as you can see, it's detecting the volume perfectly. Now I could set it to mono, left channel, mono, right channel, which in a stereo setup would actually make a difference. Or I can make it stereo, which, as this is mono, won't make any difference whatsoever. 
So in order to get started, you have to record a track, right? That's how you make music. You have to arm a track for recording. You can name it anything by double clicking on the little gray area next to it. I'm going to call this Vox1. IOs are inputs, receives, sends. And this is really complicated stuff. I use it for MIDI's, like using vocoders, but that's with a keyboard and a MIDI setup. That would be for a different day if I ever choose to do that. Now, one thing that you notice that's also cool, you can hit Control Alt M, right click over here, and press Show Master Track, and that'll give you all the information about the entire track itself. Not the individual track, but the project entirely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press record. And as you can see, the vocals are getting picked up. I can do whatever I want with them. And they're being recorded in real time. Now, if I press spacebar or I hit stop, I could also pause and then resume later. I'm going to press save all. The hotkey for recording is control R or I can just press the big red button. Press save all, or select this, rename it. I'm gonna rename it to Vox, which as you can see, all saved to the Reaper Media Storage by default directory on your My Documents system directory. So, these are all the project files saved for this song. So if you wanna go in and change which defaults are saved where, you can do that later. I'm just going to save all, I'm not going to rename anything, not going to do anything like that, and I'm just going to show you. When you play, you can choose to record monitor, which is going to cause an awkward stereo effect in your ears, and you're going to be able to hear yourself as you talk, or play the instrument as you're doing it. Record monitoring basically meaning you're able to hear what you're recording in real time as it's being recorded. I use that for guitar and etc. things when I'm plugged direct in, and I have to use it. Now what you can do is you can also unarm that for recording, press play, and as you'll notice over here, it's going to start with an awkward kind of low level vocal volume level. But it also shows up here. This and this are the exact same. However, with this, you can set automated faders and envelopes. So if I wanted to adjust the volume of it, I could make that visible, I could pan it, the entire track, the entire project, anything. As a matter of fact, you can do that with any individual track and any individual uh, wave file or recorded anything just by clicking on the trim. The cool thing about that is you can then automate volume by clicking shift, clicking shift, clicking shift and dragging so now this is going to be really low volume and you can tell it's inaudible there I can then lower this again I can make this freakishly loud at the end and cause problems that is the basics of how to record your first track with Reaper any questions see the rest of the video after this I'm going to uh, create an entire project under Reaper and show you what you can do with it All right, here we are. I have the drum tracks down and just a little bit more. All right, time to tune the bass. Now on to the vocals and the guitar. Just a little bit left, as you can see, I just finished the bass line. I'm going to do something now that's pretty cool. I'm going to save the project, now called Demo Project. Use Pod Farm. This is the effects area. Here you can sidechain plugins, you can uh, stack plugins, and load effects chains. 
Now, I could use the metal core base effects chain and see how that sounds. Remove this pod farm. And see, I've got my compressor, endorphin. I've got pod farm, which has a custom tone called ink base metal that I made. And those are the effects. I've also got effects for a virtual instrument for a drum machine called Addictive Drums. The preset is Metal Lick. So this is going to be a metal song, and on to the guitar. One of my personal favorite features of Reaper is the ability to make folders that then you can apply effects to that will then distribute that effect among the individual tracks as if they were a single track, but they're not. So you can put a whole bunch of tracks under this one folder and then add the same level of compression or the same level of limiting and EQ it all together if you want, or just run it through a transparent compressor or something along those lines that you just want things to sound the same in that general folder. For example, you can throw all the drums under one form of limiting. I wouldn't recommend it because that may not be the best for every situation. However, you can do it. Also, you can create tracks under that, make them the last track, record into it, and have the same level of effects placed without really creating a new track and applying all the same effects to it. This will do that automatically. Now then, onto the recorded vocals and that'll be the last part. Alright now, for all intents and purposes, I'm done this song. In order to make a rough cut of it, I go to save the project first of all with control S and then I go and render it because based on the project settings it'll have a specific set of things to render to. My first choice is a sample rate of 48 kilohertz, stereo channels, and full speed offline rendering. I don't want to resample it, unless I absolutely have to, I'm going to choose to use an MP3. This can also export to WAV, an Apple file, a CD image to burn to a CD, a whole bunch of other ones, FLAC, which is the free and lossless audio codec, MP3, everybody knows MP3, AugVorbis, open source for the win, and video files. You can even make it a GIF if you want to. You can also make it a wave pack to put in certain games such as Unreal Tournament, I think, and anything pretty much by id software. So, I'm going to choose the maximum bitrate or quality, and I'm going to render one file to my desktop, known as the Denmo Project. <laughs> I uh, mixed it with a compressor set to loud and punchy settings, so the whole thing should look like this. Your file is going to be a lot different, I just wanted mine to be loud and dramatic. Now then, to play the end for you. Thank you for listening, and I hope you had a good day.